You're watching our talk. I'm Jujhar Singh. When I was preparing for this show with well-known Bharatanatyam dancer Pratibha Pellad, I heard and I read various descriptions of her. Destiny's child, controversy's child, a pushy woman. But I suspect that Pratibha Pellad is going to be forthright with the questions we're going to be putting to her. Hi, Pratibha. Hi. <laughs> Am I right that you're frank and forthright about who you are? Well, I mean, that's, what, that's people's perception. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, but tell me, Pratibha, why is it that people say that you're a pushy woman? I don't know. I don't care what people say, actually. I really don't care about, you know, others' opinion of me. You say you don't care about what people say, but you see yourself as a pushy woman. I don't think so. I mean, I'm just a normal, you know, professional woman, yes. Or is it that she's someone who speaks her mind, so it can be seen sometimes as being a bit aggressive? Well, I think that um, candor is not appreciated in our society, in our culture, and probably people have a problem with that. Well, you know, Pratibha, you faced a lot of challenges in life, and they began when you were young. You were a student in Bangalore, and you went on a field trip to Chennai with one of your teachers, mm -hmm. and he apparently passed sexist comments, and you took him to court along with fellow students. What happened at the time? Well, how do you know about that? I mean, that was <laughs> a long, long time ago. But it happened. It did. And it you did. took him to court. Yes, I did. Because um, he failed all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, once, I mean, after having passed sexist comments, he actually uh, failed us in an internal assessment. And why is that? Well, I think he was prejudiced. He didn't like us uh, protesting for the comments he made because, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, most Indian you know, men can't deal with <laughs> independent thinking women, so uh -huh. he had a problem. And uh, what did the court decide? Well, we won the case and I got a rank and uh, most of us who, have, who had failed, I mean, all of us passed, of course, mm -hmm. in first division and uh, I got the second rank. Let me just ask you something because I believe that your physical attractiveness actually got you into trouble many times when you were young. Well, I don't know, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a backhanded compliment. But, <laughs> you know. but um, got you into trouble many times, right? Well, I think in the profession that I am, yeah. um, I tend to meet a lot of people mm -hmm. who tend to think that dancers are an easy prey mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, uh, for a performance that they would do anything or everything. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a reason. And also a dancer is a glamorous person. A mm -hmm. dancer is, um, you know, physically, yes, attractive on stage at least. Uh -huh. And uh, she's a person who uh, puts herself in public glare. Uh -huh. So I guess, you know, there are n number of comments about her. And, I've even uh, heard that when you were a journalism student in Bangalore, your teacher actually failed you, you in particular, because he said, you're attractive and that you're going to use your sexual power to reach the top. I didn't get into journalism <laughs> out of fear that uh, it might happen. But no, no, seriously, it is the but same. this happen? It's the same teacher who uh -huh. failed us. Uh -huh. And uh, this was in mass communications. I was doing my master's in mass communications. And uh, yes, we went on a field trip. And he um, had something against upper caste upper class girls so he kept saying that you girls are go not going to be um, you know in the profession and even if you are you're going to rise through your attractiveness and mm -hmm. things like that yeah, yeah. he did I've he also did. heard that you know when all these things were happening and men were following you around in Chennai you started braiding your hair you started oiling your hair you know wearing right. nilex saris putting a bindi a mangal sutra you were doing all of this just oh to God. ward off the attention <laughs> There was a time when I went to Hyderabad for a performance and um, my mother couldn't come with me and my musicians were all, you know, they were all men in my uh, accompanying musicians. Uh -huh. And I was in the train and there was this, uh, the TC in the train who offered marriage. You know, he said, why don't we just get off? He just woke me up and I woke up with a start and he said, why don't we just get off here and get married? So I said, for what? Why? What? Who are you? And you know, that kind of a thing. So after that, uh, my mother said that maybe, you know, it's better when you travel alone to look married. Mm -hmm. So yes, the Mangal Sutra and the Bindi and the oily hair and all happened. Yes. But you know, it's, it's one thing when strangers do all of this, but frankly, I was very shocked when I heard that there was a dance teacher who apparently sort of, uh, you know, used to tell organizers not to give you concerts. I mean, why was that, for example? Ah, uh, Jujar, I, I think you would understand that uh, people in our country don't appreciate um, a thinking, 
uh, you know, <laughs> candid, independent <laughs> woman. Yeah. They don't they don't appreciate that at all. And that's Prati and Bhatrila. That is me. And um, <laughs> I did not exactly grovel in front of them and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, beg for performances, ask them to, uh, you know, uh, to make my career for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that, you know, making or breaking a career is in anybody's hands. And mm -hmm. I'm not given to those kinds of uh, threats. Mm -hmm. So I guess people had a problem and that included some of my teachers. Yeah. Uh, and I believe there's another dance teacher of yours who take all the money in advance for performances and they never actually teach you the full dance routine for the performance. <laughs> These are all, you know, uh, means that we are resorted to by certain teachers, yes, to keep mm -hmm. control over their students. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, it, ha it happened, but mm -hmm. it happened in the... How, <laughs> how do you know all this? I mean... <laughs> they must have had a tough time trying to control you. <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> I guess. How did you deal with all of this? Um, as I'm dealing with your questions just now, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm sure you didn't smile through some of these no, cases. No, a little bit, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, a little anxious, a yeah. little, um, you know, curious as to what this was about. A little kind of, uh, you know, taken aback because I wasn't expecting it, like your questions. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I guess um, the best way that one can deal with in these situations, which is pure honesty, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. say what you have to say at that particular moment. Yeah. Yeah, but despite all of this, you still continued learning classical dancing and you learned not one but two styles. You learned Bharatanatyam, which of course is from Tamil Nadu, and Kuchipudi, which is from Andhra Pradesh. Let me ask you, what is the basic difference between these two classical styles? Perhaps you can show it to us. I'm from Karnataka hmm. and uh, I learned Bharatanatyam initially. Uh, but I did, you know, love a particular teacher's Kuchipudi teaching. I mean, Dr. Vem Satyam's teaching, I loved his style. So I did want to embellish my own Bharatanatyam by learning Kuchipudi and so I did, you know, learn for a while. But I never performed Kuchipudi in India, uh, except for two, uh, on two or three occasions. Mm -hmm. I used to perform Kuchipudi mostly abroad. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because my, you know, I was more comfortable in Bharatanatyam. It, uh, it was a form with which I had grown mm -hmm. for a longer time, mm -hmm. lived with a longer time. So I could choreograph, I was more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And what are uh, the basic differences between the two styles? Well, one is an introvert style, which is Bharatanatyam, and uh, Kuchipudi <coughs> is an extrovert style. Mm -hmm. So, a meaning? In Kuchipudi, for instance, it was, the, it was mostly a man, male dancers of the mm -hmm. Kuchipudi village, mm -hmm. who dressed up like the female you know, mm -hmm. dancers in a female garb, and they emoted. Mm -hmm. So when a man becomes a woman and tries to dance, he is doing things in a more kind of a, you know, mm -hmm. um, extrovert fashion. Yeah, yeah. So whether it be the body movement it's or more the dramatic. thing, it's more dramatic, it's yeah. more, uh, you know, a yeah. uh, lot more flourish yeah. in the movements yeah. and, yeah. you know, it, it's kind of more emphatic, right. you know, Got when it. you yeah. say, but yeah. Bharatanatyam Bharat Bharat was more a devotional style and uh -huh. it was performed by the uh, the women devadasis, mm -hmm. the dancers, mm -hmm. and so I, I guess it was more uh, minimalistic. So if it was more like an underplay where, mm -hmm. where you internalize feelings mm -hmm. and then you bring out, you know, minimal kind of um, expressions on your face. Let me refer to one of your Bharatanatyam presentations, which is called Sita's Parallel Realities. What you actually did was to portray Sita not as a sort of demure, meek woman, but as a strong woman. What exactly were you trying to do? And perhaps you can show a little <laughs> bit to us as well. The pop popular perception of Sita is that of a demure woman who, mm. um, you know, who was actually obedient, obedient, yeah. silent, uh -huh. a silent, uh, you know, uh, participator in this whole business of the life of Ram. Uh -huh. No one thought of her as the kinetic force behind uh -huh. Ramayan. Uh -huh. And it's very important to view Sita as the kinetic force because she was Swayambhu, which was like self-born, you know, born uh -huh. from yeah. the earth. Yeah. And she was also a person who could choose her death, right. which is, you know, she went, she dissolved into earth when she right. wanted to. So it's, how could Sita be demure if she was someone who could choose the timing of her birth, birth and her and death? Her death. That's yeah, exactly yeah. what the so point So the strong was. Sita, I mean, how did you portray it? I mean, perhaps if you can give us a little glimpse of it. What does Sita mean to us? What were her characteristics? What was her psyche? 
her attitude to the forces of male play in her life, her inner thoughts, feelings on different occasions. How was she born? Self-born, they say. Swayambhu. What is Swayambhu? What does Sita inhabit? What is her ground? Her father's home? Her husband's home? Ravana's home? Valmiki's ashram? The forest? Prakriti? Prakriti. Was she notional? Was she an idea? Just an idea to set Ramayana in motion. That was interesting and a very interesting thought process behind it. But you know, you've done interesting things like this. For example, there's another one I can recall. You did something called Call of the Flute, where you compared sort of Krishna and Radha with the urban and rural parts of India. I mean, what was the thinking over there? This was based on Marxian philosophy of the urban-rural divide. Um, India had just got, us, uh, got its independence and there was all this fun and fanfare uh, all over the place. So I, I take Krishna as a metaphor for the politician statesman uh -huh. and Radha as a metaphor for rural India uh -huh. and the flute as a symbol of harmony. Uh -huh. So when Krishna is in Gokul with Radha, uh -huh. he plays the flute and there's nature, beautiful, all the birds, the bees, uh -huh. the animals and they, all of them live in ha harmony. Uh -huh. But when Krishna leaves Gokul for Mathura to become the politician, uh -huh. he becomes Vasudeva. Uh -huh. You know, so the sound and the fury of his chakra, the you know the sound of the uh, the panchajanya, his uh -huh. conch, is heard all over uh -huh. India. But never does Krishna ever pick up the flute again. Uh -huh. So he leaves rural Radha behind, uh -huh. and therefore this uh, this chaos, this confusion, this dishonesty, and there is complete devastation. Um, so in, so what you know, is the point life, that you're making then? The point I'm trying to make well, is that uh, if there has to be harmony in India, mm -hmm. um, the politicians mm -hmm. have to understand that there has to be integrated development and that they have to also look <laughs> towards rural India <laughs> and look towards the development of rural India. Uh, there has to be a sort of uh, a union between Krishna and Radha. And Radha. And the flute must be playing in the background. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you show us a little glimpse of how you did it? Uh, it's a long production, but uh, yeah, I can just show you the flute part yeah. because if you would like to see it, you know, hear that. <laughs> Mohini Lagai Dekh 
Thanks very much, Pratibha. That was really nice. And I really like the music as well. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Let's take a little break now. When we come back, we'll talk about that one big controversy of yours, your 15-year relationship and children outside of marriage with a former chief minister, and also your one big achievement, conceptualizing and executing the Delhi International Art Festival. Be right back in our talk. Keep watching. Watching our talk, I'm Jujhar Singh. We're talking to the well-known Bharatanatyam and Kuchipuri dancer Pratibha Prelad. Pratibha, the last 10 years I know have been very difficult for you. It all began with the passing away of your mother in 2001. How did that affect you and your career as a dancer? Well, my mother was the earth I walked on. So, uh, in a sense that she was, you know, she was solid support to me and yeah. uh, to my career and. Uh, I was devastated, yes, that I lost her and so I didn't have support of the kind that a dancer requires <clears throat> when she travels or when she comes back home. Right. You need someone to keep your home stable and that I missed a lot. Uh -huh. I missed talking to somebody, I missed sharing my um, anxieties, my um, happiness, my joy with my mother because she understood uh, you know, from where to where I had traveled mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. dance. Yeah. So. And then three years later, in 2004, you also lost your partner, the former Chief Minister of Karnataka, Ramakrishna Hegde. And I know that you know, you've often described him as the love of your life. Um, he was very supportive and encouraging of your career as a dancer. I suppose that was a sort of a double body blow. Yes, it was. Uh, if my mother was the ground uh, beneath me, he was the sky above. Uh -huh. So yes, I lost both the ground and the sky uh, within a span of three years. But Pratibha, I want to ask you one thing. How do you deal with questions when people ask you, you know, why you had a 15-year-long relationship with somebody who was your grandfather's age and you've had twin sons with him as well? Uh, those were choices I made for myself, not for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And you've never regretted those choices? I don't regret any choice I've made, no. But even though you face a lot of barbs, because I know you face barbs from people who said that Ramakrishna Hegde helped your career as a dancer. Well, I mean, people say a lot of things about a lot of people. I'm sure you had people talking about you also, which mm -hmm. may not be true, <laughs> you know. So in, in a uh, career like ours, you know, when you're in public life mm -hmm. and in public glare, there are tens and thousands of people who say tens and thousands of things. Yeah. And they say it because they don't have a life of their own. Do you think there's a price to be paid for being unconventional, for being a rebel? Well, I'm sure there is. Even Jesus Christ had to pay a price for being who he was. <laughs> You know, he was crucified. So, yeah, there is. Does it make you lonely? Um, there is a difference between loneliness and aloneness. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not lonely. I'm alone. Mm -hmm. But I have my two children with mm -hmm. me and I have a whole world of friends around. So, mm -hmm. no, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy. And of course, you're leading a very busy life. For example, yes. you conceived of the Delhi International Arts Festival in 2007. It's now become a successful annual event. What's the aim of the festival, Pratibha? Uh, Delhi Arts Festival aims to establish India as a global cultural superpower. Mm -hmm. So it is multi-art, multi-venue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an annual festival that drives home cultural tourism. And, also and you have so music, you have dance, you have literature, theatre, films, martial arts also. We I heard. have everything, yeah. everything, and everything that comes under the genre of art. So when's the next edition, 2011? Uh, 31st October until the 15th of November. Okay. And it's a 15 day long festival. We have almost 29 countries uh, participating and I think it's going to be really good. Uh -huh. I mean, it's going to rock. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's going to be multi-venue. How many artists are going to be participating? Um, almost, and also, who are some of the ones we can look forward to? Um, we have a jazz group from USA and whenever my young friends heard about, you know, the group, they got excited. Uh, Paul Baudry and group, uh -huh. uh, you know, then we have a, a jazz and blues group from Australia. Uh -huh. uh, we have an opera from Italy for the first time ever, uh -huh. an Italian opera. Uh -huh. 
and we have almost 29 we have a comedy show from japan mm -hmm. and uh, we have a colombian artist who's turned his gun into a guitar uh -huh. so he's more like a like a social like a like a message you know he, he has a social message uh -huh. through his art so, so there's actually a lot lined up over there yes well, we look forward to that but tell me you know when you're doing such a big project and many other projects as well where does that leave your your dance career um well i do think that it compromises your dance career a bit because mm -hmm. uh, you can't perform as much as you would like to you can't travel as much as you would uh, it's you know, sort of like taken to. a back seat in the last couple of years it really hasn't i mean it's a it's a conscious decision mm -hmm. because i feel that every art form especially dance has a lifespan mm -hmm. and i feel really sad looking at all these senior dancers trying to look young and beautiful and dance because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't behave well yeah. uh, for them or for the art form and uh, even when I was young, when I was 20 years old, I had decided that, you know, that when I stopped looking as good as I did, when mm -hmm. I, at that time I would not dance anymore, <laughs> you know, because I think ballerinas retire at 35 uh -huh. and they move on to other things. Uh -huh. So I think everybody, I mean, there are different faces in people's life and uh, uh, an intelligent person knows how to use those faces well. And you prefer being a dance and cultural organizer and promoter now? I'm a dancer, I'm a teacher, I choreograph. Uh -huh. uh, my students are going to China next week mm -hmm. uh, to participate in a you know, youth, youth kind of a festival. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my choreographies are actually you know, pretty uh, unique and there are, I have, all the others follow what I do. So I'm a pioneer in many, many uh, you know, ways uh -huh. uh, in this particular field. And, I don't consider myself an organizer, I consider myself a visionary. Uh -huh. I'm an arts visionary uh -huh. and I think I'm an administrator of arts. So, right. I mean, you didn't use the adjective either for okay. myself. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your frankness and your forthrightness <laughs> throughout this interview. Good luck with the festival and thank you very much for thank joining you, us. Thank you, I enjoy talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.